Hey everybody, so in this video I just want to give an overview of the STR frame and what comes with it, um, what can you expect you know, as far as building it. Um, so I'm just going to go over some of the details on the components that come with it. Uh, the first thing to note is that it's built around these servos here. Um, and the reason I say that it's built around them is because the slot for the servo uh, will accept these two servos. If you have something that's bigger, smaller, you know, it may or may not fit. Um, this, the spacing for the servo mount it will fit these two. So that being said, um, you know, you got to stick to either one of these or something similar. Um, the first one here is the HS82, which is a metal gear but a plastic case. And this is a, a metal case and, and metal gear digital servo. So I really like this one. Um, and this is what I've been using uh, in the last couple builds. So for, this, for, the, um, for mounting the servo linkages, or the control arm, uh, you get this adapter for the for the servo horn. So you would you would attach this to your servo horn, um, and then your linkages. I've been using the last, the bottom second to last bottom hole here, so it would look like this. Um, there's some other holes here, and they're, they're just used for testing. I mean, I really was trying different configurations to see what worked best, but in the end, um, the second to last hole gives th th enough throw and it flies you know, perfectly, so I've just been using that. Um, for mounting it, there's a groove on here, uh, and I use that for the servo arm so that it fit, fit, fits fleshly on there. So um, the, the high-tech servo, you would mount this groove facing the horn and then on this servo you would rotate it uh, because the, the, the servo arms don't have a groove um, so you'll have to remove um, this little bump in order to to fit it on the servo arms that'll make a little more sense once you see you know each servo arm um, and I'll do a build video so you guys can see how this all goes together. Uh, the other thing is the power plug. Is it's a XT60, and I like mounting it rigidly on the frame because it makes it easy to remove the battery and plug it in. Um, to attach this, you would solder you know, this piece to the base, but I like to cut a little bit, about a sixteenth off the plastic here, so that you get more copper on the bottom. And that just, uh, it'll work just like this, but I think it's a little more rigid mount, because there's more material for the solder to, to adhere to. So once you solder it on there, you, you would bolt it on to the bottom here just like that. So it's permanent and you just unplug and pull the battery off and I'd have to fumble with two different connections. So I've been doing that on all, all my frames now and I just, I just like the way it works. As for the frame itself, here's kind of a breakdown of it. It's, it's all 1.5 millimeter uh, sheets. The booms themselves are 2 millimeter thick and they are they do have a hole in the center so you can run the wires down the middle without having them exposed um, if you do have the wires exposed where you they run around along the side you there is a slot here or a little bit of a gap so the wires can can fit through and it won't get pinched when it's moving but let me just take it apart so you can see how everything goes together Uh, okay, so one thing you want, you want need to know is 
I basically stacked everything in the center. So you've got the flight board and then the servo in the middle and then the power distribution board on the bottom. So that doesn't leave a ton of space here for components. But I found, you know, most of the ESCs now are so small, you, I can fit them in here without any problem, uh, either f further forward or even right in the middle of the body. But that being said, your, your, your flight board's gonna mount on top. So on top of this plate, there's 10 millimeter standoffs and your flight board would mount here with the header pins facing up but you do need to use 90 degree header pins because otherwise you can't get your servo connections on so that's just one thing to note I'll, I'll be making a build video like I said but the servo, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the flight board would mount on top and then the only thing I connect to it is the receiver I'm using the satellite receiver and you've got just one piece uh, and then I mount bolt it on here and make my connections for the motors so it's it's relatively clean I guess I would say you just remove the top plate it comes away with the flight board and the receiver so once you take that piece off you'll see that uh, in this case I'm, I'm just using a generic you know part distribution board um, so you can use anything you like um, and the way I've set this up is is I, I mounted where the pads are facing down so that you can just run your wires and then solder the ESC connections once you've got them in there I do pre-wire the main power lines and the video and transmitter uh, feed lines so that makes you know that piece easier uh, the only thing I solder in, in place is the ESCs. So, if you take this apart, the first thing I took out was the camera plate, which it just has a couple of slots on here for board camera. And rather than use screws, I just use zip ties. So I put a piece of foam, camera, and a couple of zip ties. Um, as far as the arms themselves, you know, the if you look at this piece um, there's a slot let me see if you can see it on camera it's all black but here I don't know if you can see it there yeah there's a slot here where your ESCs would exit so you can run them right down the boom it's a little more work because you're making everything you know pretty clean but you've got to solder the ESCs after you've run the wires through but um, it's kind of worth it. Uh, you can run them on the outside, like I said earlier, but it's just personal choice. And the last thing to really note is that there's a couple blind nuts in here. You can see these little blocks. A couple blind nuts that let you uh, remove the servo in and out without having to, you know, fumble with lock nuts or screws and nuts on the inside. You simply put in your servo, tighten it from the outside, and you're you're done. If you clean, if you leave the space on the center and put these ESCs on the outside, you'll be able to remove your servo in and out without any problem. So that's that's that. Um, it goes together, like I said, pretty easy. It is maybe a little bit more of an advanced build, but uh, I feel it's worth just the experience of flying a tilt rotor quad. So any questions? Let me know. And thanks for watching.